kommer ta tröja på dig. Det ska vi vänta. Oh, so how did you first get into cricket? So I've actually got an older brother. He played both cricket and football, so I guess like from a really young age, I just sort of copied him really and was um, playing in the garden and stuff like that. And then played at my local club from sort of probably eight or nine. Yeah. And then I've been like in the length system from nine or 10 years old really, come right through. Mine's literally the same, like I've got an older sister. Oh, and she okay. used to play mainly football rather yeah. than cricket. But I feel like when you're a young kid, you do every single sport possible. Like when I was 15, I had to make the decision whether I was going to carry on cricket or football because I was at like pretty good level for both. But I chose the right sport in the end. What do you reckon has been the biggest changes in women's sports since from like when you started to now? I think one of the main things is visibility. I feel like when I was younger, I couldn't see a clear pathway to be like a professional footballer or a professional cricketer. Growing up, it was sort of hard to see that and I had to be in a boys team, train with boys all the time. And nowadays, you don't necessarily see that as, as often because there's so many more girls playing football. There's so many televised games. You see a lot more young kids realize that things like that are possible. And, that's when you get more girls involved in the game. So what do you think has been the proudest moment of your career so far? I'd probably say this time last year I went on an England day tour to Australia, um, which was pretty cool. Um, Did you say day tour? An A tour, oh, so like the Lions tour. I was going to say you went to Australia for a day. <laughs> day. <laughs> that's a <commitment. laughs> What about you? What's your proudest moment? Probably say winning the Euros. Yeah, I, I knew I that. Was like, yeah. Yeah. It's still hard to sort of believe it yeah. now, really. The effect it had on so many people. I think that's what means the most for yeah, everyone yeah, is yeah, just yeah. seeing young girls and young boys realise that things like that are possible. And yeah. yes, it's going to be hard to top that. I'll yeah. tell you that. But I remember watching <laughs> it. I was a career at 22. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so not just women's football. How good is it to see just like women's sport in general growing so much? It's nice to see everyone succeeding and doing well and women supporting other women as well in all, all different sports. The amount of growth I've seen, like, even in the last few years, is like yeah, drastic it's hard, it? and yeah. it's sort of crazy and exciting to think of how much it could grow in the yeah. future. Here's Pentadale, deflection, 4-3! They've beaten Manchester City here. Maramielda! Brilliant penalty, all three points for the champions now. How much is it now an uphill battle considering you've had back-to-back -back losses so early on in the season? And I think, you know, if they're given time, I think this is going to be a really good team. New Kelly's cross in and Hep is there. The home side have got their first win. Oh, it's a great corner right onto the head of Shaw. Kelly again. Managed to get the cross in once more, and there's Coombs, and that's 1 1. That's a gallop. Well, touched on here for Khadija Shaw. And you just knew what was coming next. Kelly gets the cross in. Head Zappin. City lead. It's one back by Shaw. Options in the middle. Kelly makes it. We've got a big, strong group of characters in that dressing room there, and I believe in every one of them. We're really looking forward to the challenge. Welcome to Match Day Live for what is a huge clash at the top of the WSL table as Manchester City take on Chelsea at the Academy Stadium on Women's Football Weekend. City currently on a four-game winning streak and are two points behind Chelsea at the top of the table. They know a win today will put them firmly in the title race going into the last two months of the season. Buddy Shaw's got 15 goals in 15 games in the WSL this season. Four goals ahead of Rachel Daly of Aston Villa and she'll be looking to increase her tally and secure the golden boot.
Well, good morning. I'm Mike Mine. Welcome to Match Day Live. Before we get going with the team news, with the kickoff a little over an hour away, let me introduce you to our two special guests here on Match Day Live. It is the Manchester City legend that is Sean Wright Phillips. And Manchester City super fan Stephen McInerney as well. <laughs> Gents, how are we? Are we good? Oh, it's yeah. definitely not morning anymore, mate. You need to change your clocks. I there. do. Oh, yeah. Everything's good, doesn't uh, it? Yeah. Good, man. Good. You good? You good? You right? I'm good. I'm good. You can tell clearly by that start. I'm probably still in bed. Um, this is a massive game, Sean, today, in terms of the title race, in terms of the fixture in itself. Yeah, it's a very, very big game. I think it. If City win this today, which I'm hoping they will do, it's a massive statement to say we're here to do business and obviously it'll put them in the, in the driving position for the WSL, to be honest. They'll be top of the league, I think, correctly. And then it will just be for Gareth Taylor and the, and the girls to build on and kick on and keep doing what they're doing. But then it will be a chasing game for everybody else. Uh, let's have a look at the team news then with kick-off an hour away. Uh, we'll look at your starting eleven. Two changes from the game against Aston Villa last weekend. Coombs is in for Castellanos. Horton is in for Casper Ice. So, Ellie Roebuck starts in goal for Manchester City this afternoon uh, with Esme Morgan at right back. On the other side will be Leia Alexandri. The two centre-backs of Horton and Greenwood in midfield. Hasegawa, Coombs and Angledahl with... Uh, Hemp and Kelly, either side of uh, Bunny Shaw. And I think, Stephen, we'll, we'll touch on Bunny Shaw because the goal record is, is insane at the minute. It's absolutely remarkable. <laughs> Me and Shaw were, were chatting before this game and how like, City have strikers that have got more than one goal per game. It's just, just absolutely incredible. And like Bunny Shaw, it's crazy to think that she's going to be on the pitch today opposite Kerr and could be the most informed striker in, in on the pitch, which is absolutely crazy. And her her season so far is just absolutely... I think it's 26 and 24 she's got or something like that at the moment. Just everything she seems to touch turns to gold. Like An incredible finisher. Um, yeah, just a wonderful world-class player who who could do something really, really special this season. And if City are going to win the league, it, a lot of it will be down to her. Essentially, Sean, give her the ball and, and, hope, and, and hope for the best or trust her to do, to do what she's been doing all season. Yeah, exactly that. And I think it, it, it helps when you have people like Hemp, Kelly, Coombs, and then you've got Hasegawa in the midfield, which dictates and creates nice patterns of play and also puts in those creative passes. But it, you've got to be a good finisher to get on the end of them and putting them in the back of the net. And it seems like whatever chances Bunny gets, they seem to go in the back of the net at the minute. And it's something that City will need today is those chances to go in the back of the net because we know yeah. that they're going to create them. It's just whether they take them in a game like this. And what they've done at the other end of the field in, in defence is put Steph Horton in uh, today. She she replaces Kirsten Kasper. There's a, there's a lot of experience with, with yeah. Steph Horton for, for such a big fixture. Well, yeah, you do need your, your captains, your leaders in games like this and the experience that Steph's got. Like, this is the kind of game where you need people like her. I mean, it's as big as it gets in the season against Chelsea, you know. Reigning champions, immense, immense quality and immense experience over on the other side of the pitch. So you need people like Steph Orton and, and she's been there, she's done it, she's won so much and um, she'll be great, you know, um, alongside people like Esme, who obviously is much younger, um, like a player experience herself anyway, but it's going to help uh, that back line so much to have her there. Um, yeah, I mean, City, if they're going to win today, we need Steph Orton at her very best. Sean, you mentioned that the midfield and Hasegawa, who kind of is the linchpin in midfield, dictates the play. What role has she got today? It's very important. I think this game can be won in the midfield. I think the team that controls that midfield area will supply and create the, the more chances for their attacking players to cause a lot of problems. And just the way she plays it, for me, is delightful. I, I'm small myself, and to see somebody control the flow of the game, go through the tackles that she does, keep possession of the ball and she plays at her own pace. She sees the game in her own way and for me, I think she's very key to that midfield today. How, how important when, <laughs> when you are of, of smaller stature or how hard is it to be able to control a game in, in the way that it's, she it's, does? It's very hard, it, especially in that area that she's playing. She's not playing out wide. She's not playing as a number 10. She's playing in the thick of it or she always seems to be able to make time for herself, regardless of whether she's under pressure or not. Her first touch always takes her normally into beautiful areas where she can play the next pass onwards. And those things set moves up or those things dictate the speed of the game. And 
been watching her all season and she does it delightfully. Yeah, she is. She's, 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 she's so, so good. Like the, the technical ability and the elegance to a game. It's just, it's absolutely crucial. And like, it, as Sean said, like City today, they're going to have to control that midfield with, with Chelsea's quality. And, and Hazegawa has been absolutely excellent. Just, you love to watch footballers like her, you know, with that elegance and that technical ability. Just mesmeric and fantastic mm. player. Uh, Laura Coombs also starting today, recently recalled to the, to the England squad after a period away, enjoying what is a fine season, signed a contract extension uh, as well. And she's now back performing week in, week out for the team. It's, it's great to see that, especially when, when signings come in and they're always normally the players that play. She, she's dug deep, she's waited her time, she's got a chance and, and she's taken it. And that England call-up call only boosts confidence. So we're expecting to see the Laura Coombs that everybody wants to see, being a danger, being a threat, causing loads and loads of problems and providing free balls to your people like Bunny, Hemp and Kelly, that, that will get in behind that Chelsea defence because Chelsea are going to be happy if we're just playing in front of them. It's when we have them turned going the other way, which will cause problems, as, as we'll see the chances that are creating are those sneaky little balls that are played in between the, the back line and the goalkeeper, which City get a lot and they just, just tap them in. And hopefully there's a lot of those today. Yeah, fingers crossed. Um, I guess we have to touch on it, Stephen. The last game was, was defeat to Aston Villa in the FA Cup. How does that now set up Gareth Taylor's side heading into today's game and, and only really the WSL to, to focus on? Yeah, I mean, it's one of those things where it's obviously devastating to lose a game of that importance, but the best teams do use that as a, as a step to build on, basically. And the focus now has to be the WSL because that's it. That is the focus of the, of the team. And I think that there can be a clarity to that, I guess, at the same time. As much as it's frustrating, it's a good chance to sort of reset, you know, work out what went wrong and then approach a game of this magnitude. And personally, I'm not a footballer. I'm sure Sean was, obviously. If I if I'd lost a game like that, I would want a game this big for the next one, you know, to prove yourself again, so to speak. And it's as big as it gets, isn't it? You know, Chelsea are a phenomenal side. I mean, would you want that? Would you want a big game after a disappointing loss? Or? Um, you just want any game, really, <laughs> yeah, yeah. as a player to come quick and try and bounce back. But I think what it's done, what it's done for the girls and the ladies is that now it's a single-minded focus, sometimes focusing on so many different tournaments can, and competitions can be hard, whereas now they know it's the WSL, that's, that's what they're playing for. So their minds are solely focused on this game and trying to achieve that goal. Uh, well, he's picked the starting 11. Let's hear from the man himself. The manager, Gareth Taylor, has been speaking to Ali Mann. Gareth, I know every game has significance, but is this one just a little bit more significant, do you feel? I think so, yeah. I think it's um, pretty obvious that uh, we need to win today, and I think that's a good position to be in. We always go about every game to try and win, regardless, so nothing changes from that perspective. But, yeah, of course, with the with the table and where it's set. I think, obviously, if we weren't successful today, that would make it really difficult because that would give a pretty unassailable lead with this period of the season for Chelsea. So I think it's a good position for us to be in. I think we need to look at how well the players have done to get us to this point. And, you know, to be in this position where we are now is something that we would have taken at the beginning of the season. So it's one to really look forward to, to the challenge. You talk about the beginning of the season. A lot has changed since you last played them. What in particular have you been able to do in these last few months to get that unbeaten run in the WSL? I just think time with the players. I think that's the main one. You know, we were a new group when we came together at the start of the season with no pre-season, as the rest of the teams had through the Euros. It was really difficult. So we've worked hard. We've worked well together. The group, is, the group dynamic is really good. And, um, yeah, we put ourselves into a really good position. And I think... It's, it's looking at what happens today. If we do it, fantastic. We've still got a lot of work to do. And if we don't, the next challenge is trying to secure a Champions League place, which is really important for us as a club. Um, but also to take perspective on you know, the effort of the players this season, which has been really good. Just on today's lineup, a couple of tweaks from the Villa game. What's your thought process behind that? Just the personnel, really. I think Steph coming back in gives us that stability and, uh, and experience in these types of games. So I think, um, and obviously Laura's had a really good season. So, you know, sometimes we've got good options. And I think regardless of who starts the game, we have important players who are going to finish the game as well. It's, it's a squad game these days. And, um, you know, that's, that's obviously really important for any team. What were the lessons you learned from the Aston Villa experience last weekend? Take your chances when you're in the ascendancy and keep things tight at the back. The game never changes. I think it's... Uh, 
making sure that it was the first brace we gave away since the start of the season uh, in terms of goals against, against Chelsea. So, um, which was disappointing for us because we've been really good in that space. Uh, and we've been good at the other end of the pitch as well. So, sometimes if you don't take those moments um, or maybe clearly define better chances, you're always going to run the risk of putting the game at risk. Just one final thought. You know how strong they are. They're in sandwiched in between two Champions League games for them. Are there areas that you particularly targeted with them today? Are there things that you've noticed that you can exploit today? Well, I think we need to start the game quickly. I think that's, you know, without going into too much detail, one of the things we looked at is to start the game quickly, get after them. You know, albeit they travelled in the week, it wasn't too far. They've had a tough game against, you know, the, the European champions and got a really good result. So we want to capitalise on any kind of um, complacency on their part and, and try our best to get a really good start in the game. Well, the best of luck with it today. Cheers. Thanks, Alistair. Thanks for your time. Uh, we've done a VAR check in the studio. It is still morning, by the way. <laughs> I was wrong. <laughs> Ironically, it's me that's tired. And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> Kick off is 12.40. The clock's <laughs> going forward back when it messes with everybody. Um, Gareth Taylor there emphasising the point. Steph Orton bringing stability back in, in, in the starting 11 as well as one of the two changes today. Um, Sean, want to look at the, the forward line. We, we touched on it a little bit before with the team news, but, but you mentioned in passing Lauren Hemp and Chloe Kelly, their ability out wide, and we can see uh, Lauren Hemp scoring here previously, but but what role is hers uh, probably starting on the left today? Um, it's, it's, it's key. I think that sh she's a provider um, for Bunny, so she needs to be at her best today and as well to get on the box score sheet. And those chances are, are stuff that you see now in, in wingers, that they they're prop it in the back stick for when the cross is coming from their, their opposing side. And that's a great ball in, and that's the area I was talking about, those balls where between the defender and the goalkeeper, neither of them know which one's going to go for it. So in that case, they both left it and she gets a tap in. But as well as putting them away, we're expecting him to put those sort of crosses in as well for for the attackers to, to get on the end of them too. It's, it's such a, a dynamic front three, isn't yeah. it? That each one can can provide one of those balls in the box, Stephen, or, or likewise do Lauren Hemp, and as we'll see in a minute, Chloe Kelly, and, and finish those opportunities. They make football look simple. I mean, that's the best way you can say it. I mean, that whole uh, attacker, the opposite side, attacking the back post, it's just such a simple thing, but it's it's not easy to do. Otherwise, we'd see so many wins of 20, 30 goals a season, but that front three in general is just so much pace, dynamism, skill and work rate as well. Like, obviously, you can't be as good as they are without the intensity that they bring to the game, but... Yeah, I, I, Chloe Kelly and Lauren Hemp, they're just, they're just brilliant wingers, aren't they? They're just absolutely pivotal and you know, Bunny wouldn't be having the season that she had without them. And obviously Laura Coombs behind them as well. The whole that front four is just so dynamic and aggressive and, um, and that will hopefully cause Chelsea problems today. I mean, uh, I think I've seen the few times as well that they've switched sides of the pitch, haven't they, a few times. So they're so versatile, which is, it's just so hard to stop. I think Chelsea, obviously top of the league, are scoring goals and winning games, but that front three's got to be one of them, the best in, in the women's game right now, isn't it? Um, I personally believe so, and I think their stats and what they've been doing yeah. show that as well. Um, but when you're at the top of the league, that's the normal side that gets talked about the most. So I think that is why today, for me, is, is if they play well and, like Gareth said, get after them straight away, I think they could shock Chelsea early on. And then City, for me, will be in the ascendancy because we know they control most of the games anyway with the way they play. So if they get that early goal and control the game as well, I think it'll be very difficult today. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the early goal, especially at home as well, like you want you want the crowd behind you. They will be because they always are. But that the confidence that you'll get from that and then knowing how they can keep the ball and pass it around and knowing that they can work exceptionally hard, Chelsea will then have to try and pull out, score a goal and hopefully with the pace that City have got on the counter. Mm. Yeah, it could be absolutely crucial and it's a good chance of that. Once you've got that forward line, you've always got a chance and it, it's just such an electric forward line that I think Chelsea will be a little bit apprehensive. Chloe Kelly on the left or Chloe Kelly on the right? Chloe Kelly on the right. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah Why is to that? start with, I think I think it will start that way. Yeah. I but think... that's the beauty of it, isn't it? She can play yeah. wherever and be as impactful whichever way she plays. And I think in that goal that we just saw on, on that clip, I think you can see, obviously, Bunny shots the ball down, but both wingers are central at the time and Bunny's on the left. So to have that movement in between them so fluent it only makes it harder for defenders to pick up because most centre backs do not want to go out wide and defend whereas it doesn't bother, it doesn't matter with our attackers they'll take their defenders anywhere on the pitch. 
Uh, a reminder that you can uh, WhatsApp your thoughts, put any questions as well to, to Sean and, and Stephen this afternoon. We, we'd love to hear from you here on Match Day Live. The number for the WhatsApp is on your screen uh, right now. Get your questions and thoughts into us and we'll get through as many as we can uh, later in the show. Also remember to download the Manchester City app. You'll gain access to City Plus and recast exclusive live commentary. We're bringing you Manchester City against Chelsea in just under an hour's time or so. We've talked enough about the Manchester City team. Let's have a look at the Chelsea team for today. And Katrin Berger continues in goal for Chelsea, a solid player between the sticks. Uh, Buchanan, Mielder, Eriksen Carter, Lupols, Ingle James, Cuthbert, Wrighton, and Sam Kerr as well completes uh, their starting lineup for Emma Hayes' side today. You can see that on your screen now. Um, we talk about Bunny Shaw at one end. Chelsea will look to, to Sam Kerr this afternoon, Sean. Um, yes, um, definitely will, I think. That it's going to be a little bit harder for Sam Kerr today, I think. I think with without Kirby in that team, which everybody knows and knows what her capability is, especially with the passes she plays and the passes she sees. But I think with, with Lauren James in there, that may go over to her as responsibility to try and provide those, those chances and creations. But um, for me in general, Today, as much as we want to talk about the, the Chelsea team, I just think if City do what we know they can do best, I think for all those players it'll be difficult. But you you can't shy away from the fact that Chelsea do have some fantastic yeah. talents in that team. Mm. Sam Kerr, 21 goals in, in 20 games this year. So it is, I guess, <laughs> if you want to put it back on City, <laughs> it's, it's, pretty good. <laughs> it's, it's not bad. Um, it, it's putting it back on Steph Horton then to, to guide that defence and, and find a way to stop her. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and the only good thing from Steph Horton's perspective is that there's not many footballers in the women's game that are as well known as Sam Kerr. She's phenomenal. You know, I guess Bunny will be looking across, you know, the picture being, well, she's where I want to be. You know, her reputation within the game, she's an absolute icon, and uh, rightfully so for what she's achieved. I mean, I think it's 81 in 96 for Chelsea, which is just a stupid record. Mm. You know, it's absolutely insanely good. And um, and of course, when you've got her, you've got a chance, even without Fran Kirby. And uh, but Steph Horton does have that experience. You know, she's she's a leader for a reason. Um, Keep her quiet and see you've got a massive chance. It's just a lot easier to say that than it is actually to do. <laughs> no, it's just, you know. Guru Wright and will obviously get the assists as well for Chelsea, who are still in three competitions this season. Sean, in the WSL title race, in the FA Cup and, and the Champions League as well. How much of an impact will that have in today? Because I guess at this point in the season, can they afford to focus on one and, and give priority? Or, or is it full strength ahead in everything? And, and therefore, in City's favour, will, will the players perhaps be a little bit tired? Um, I think you've got to expect whether it's if they start with a little bit of complacency, obviously coming back from the Champions League game, or later on in the game they tire out, there will be a dip somewhere in there. And I think when you got, you're in that many competitions, you would normally expect a lot of rotation. But I don't think they have rotated that much. I think that the main players that are missing are the players that are only missing due to injury. Otherwise, you can see they would just go full strength for all of them. So you can see what their goal is and what they're trying to achieve. But at, the, at this point, is you have to just refer back to it. it. Doesn't we can't concentrate on what they're going to do. We have to play the way we know how we can play, and if we do it well, we will cause Chelsea a lot of problems. And they're coming here. I would say more so worrying about what our front three and our number 10 is going to do more than worrying about, right, we need to get the ball to, to Sam Kerr. As good as she is, it doesn't matter when you come to places like this. It's going to be a very, very difficult game for them. Yeah, absolutely. It, uh, I mean, that's the, the, the beauty of this right now. City are, I think, unbeaten in the league since Chelsea in, back in September. That was a 2-0 loss. And City have probably learned an awful lot by then because it was such an upheaval in the summer. So many new players coming in. That is a different Man City side. It's a more settled Man City side. And Chelsea will be apprehensive. I mean, we were chatting before and me and Sean about how important Millie Bright is for them. She's not playing today either. So you've got Fran Kirby and Millie Bright both not involved. That's You, know, you always do want to see the best players on the pitch. But... That's a huge loss for Chelsea, and that you know um, that puts you know that definitely puts a little bit more pressure on them, you know, because they'll be aware of the, the quality they've got uh, and that they haven't got there anymore. So 
I think in general Chelsea will be a little bit nervous about this game because I think City will feel like they have something to prove after the loss against them early in the season and the FA Cup game. So I'm, I'm quite optimistic about this. Do you think Chelsea, having won so many WSL titles, might just focus a little bit more on the, on the Champions League this year, Sean? If a fan, you would say something like that. But as a player, and I would say as a manager, no. I've, I personally think they're going to try to win it all. I think if, if they got that lucky and played that well to do all of those things, that's, it'll go down in history for what? For yeah. however long we're, we're, we're around. So for me, I think they're going to go for it all. Yeah, that's the next thing, isn't it? When you've won so many trophies, you want to win all of them in one season. Yeah. That'll be the next goal for them, to achieve immortality, basically. And they are close, which makes it scary. Yeah, I uh, did enjoy your answer on there. You can tell who's the fan and who's the player, <laughs> on, on, on who's dominating what trophies and, and which ones they prioritise. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, let's hear from the Chelsea manager, Emma Hayes, uh, talking about Gary Taylor's side. This is another game. You know, you guys, you know, spend the time building up the drama. My job is preparing the team to be ready for the task. I mean, it's clear they've you know, been a threat, particularly wide areas. Bunny Shaw's had an unbelievable season. You know, with Hemp and Kelly, tremendous players, Hasegawa, their midfield as a whole has been excellent. You know, they're a team that I think had a really, really good run after their early season losses. And, you know, they've, they've got world-class international players that are you know, capable of hurting any team and uh, we respect them as a team and equally, you know, it's about how we present ourselves to them on Sunday and I know I've got a dressing room that just look forward to games like this and we certainly approach the game in that manner. I mean, Gareth's an outstanding coach and, you know, the way his team plays is indicative of that. I um, always think Manchester City teams are, have been... You know, some of the one of the top teams in the country for many, many years, and you know Gareth, as I said before, is an outstanding coach, and I look forward to coming up against him again at the weekend. Listening to that was uh, Sean Wright Phillips and Stephen McInerney, who are part of the team on Match Day Live today. Instantly, you said playing it down. Yes, <laughs> I think she's she's done it in a very clever way. I think it's the best way for her to prepare her players into what they could possibly be walking into. I think the calmer they are, the better she, she will get out of that team. But in general, it's very clever from Emma. Uh, she's not, she knows, <laughs> she's, she's, she's expecting a tough game. Like, they can, they can contend to be calm, but it's, it's hard, hard not to be, you know, when you've got a game of this magnitude. Um, it's the right thing to do, and obviously Emma, is, she knows what she's doing. She's, she's a brilliant manager and uh, so much experience. Um, but the players will be feeling it, you know. Um, once again, these are the kind of games that you want, you know. These are the big games in football that matter. And um, ultimately, whoever wins this is going to have a much greater chance to win the league. So uh, like, as much as you can try and play it down, it's, it's a huge game of football. Take us in the dressing room, Sean. How, how, how is it right now on such a big game on both sides for City and Chelsea where so much is at stake? For me, I think for us, I think the dress, dressing room will be bouncing. I think apart from the, the FA Cup, they had a great run, unbeaten run in the league. And I think they will be looking to try and extend that unbeaten run, whether it's a draw or a win. They, they won't be looking to spoil it so I think that they'll be excited and ready to go but there will be a bit of nerves because even on the city side they know how important this game is they know if they win this they go top mm -hmm. so there's there's that added pressure as well but then at the same time in Chelsea's dressing room I think there will be a little bit of nerves because I don't think a lot of players want to be injured because they have the Champions League replay well second round coming up soon as well so like you said they've got so much to play for that as well as trying to maximise everything they do, there will be that thought in your head is be careful at the same time, I think, sometimes personally as a player. Did you get nervous? I was nervous before every game, but it was always different. It's just until the whistle went. Yeah. Once the whistle goes, then it's, it's kind of like all the noises there, so you don't have no time to, to think about being nervous. And I think that will happen as soon as they get that first touch of the ball. Nerves are good, though, They'll man. be fine. Yes. Yeah, going down you, sometimes. I don't know, some nerves can be good, but then yeah. some nerves can be like overwhelming to the point where if you make a mistake, you kind of beat yourself up for it. But I think football's completely different now. Uh, we'll hear from Esme Morgan in a minute. Just one question on the, on the title race, Stephen. This year in the WSL, it's, it's fascinating. There are four teams 
going for it. Chelsea lead the pile. We know City could be top of the pile after after today's game. You've got United and, and, and Arsenal also having a, having a look around. Yeah, it's crazy that City are on this run and still not top. It's um, a ridiculously high quality and it's sort of great fun though at the same time. You know, you do want to see that many teams going for it. You do want to see, if you can get down to the last couple of games of the season and there's three or four teams in it still, look, it's, it's terrible for us as fans, but... <laughs> It's a thrilling, you know, advert for the women's game, and to me, like that's yeah, it's refreshing. I absolutely love it, and like it's it's a, uh, it's it's something that I can't really see changing either. I think it will be the, the same and same at the end of the season as well, and um, hopefully, see it'll be on the top at the end. Well, we heard from the Manchester City manager Gareth Taylor earlier. Let's hear now from Esme Morgan, who was in the studio this week ahead of the big game with Chelsea this afternoon. Both teams have beaten in the league since September. Um, we've obviously played Chelsea a lot over the years, had some brilliant fixtures against them. What are you expecting from them this time around? I think it's always such a tough fixture, usually not many goals in it. I think the game we played towards the start of the season against them when we lost 2-0, I actually think we were dominant for the first half and arguably probably deserved to get a bit more out of the game. But those are the way those games go. It comes down to being clinical, fine margins, just taking your opportunities and we didn't do that. So hopefully that's something we can do in this game. But they're always so organised defensively, really dynamic and they are ruthless in attack. So we've got to keep ourselves really tight. But I mean, they've had a Champions League game away this week. So potentially fatigue coming into our fixture could be a factor travelling can take a lot out of you and I just think we've got a lot of confidence that we can bounce back from last weekend's result and I mean whoever we were playing I think we would believe we we're capable of winning but everyone feels really up for this one so I'm excited. And home advantage this time of course and a sellout crowd expected as well um, as a player and as a City fan as well obviously no secret there how does it feel to be playing in front of that those packed out terraces and with a really vocal crowd behind you? Amazing. Uh, I love it. It's such a thrill playing in those games and like, I mean, we were away at Brighton, but when we got the last minute winner, you can hear in the emotion of the screams from the crowd what it means to everyone. And similar at Spurs, we had a really good crowd and it's not the first time this season. I think against Arsenal, they really, really helped us with the support. The atmosphere inside the stadium was great. All of the fans were packed around the ground on all sides. And it's just so much fun to play in that sort of atmosphere because it adds a little bit of pressure, but I think a lot of us kind of thrive off that. And you know that the majority of the fans are there to support you. So I think it can give us a lot of encouragement, particularly if the game's hanging in the balance to just give you that extra little drive. And the crowd can play a really important part. I always think in the momentum of the game, if you have an opportunity and they really sort of get behind you, I think that can put the opposition on edge a little bit too. Thanks for your time, Esme, and good luck on Sunday. Thank you. Manchester City's Esme Morgan starting today at right back uh, for Gareth Taylor's side. Um, she will be, hopefully, starting the process to get up to the front, to get the goals, to get to Bunny Shaw. We mentioned it at the start, 15 goals in 15 games for Bunny Shaw. When you watch her, Sean, what, what impresses you the most about her? Her mobility, uh, uh, determination to try and get on the end of crosses and it's great for the way City play because normally when the ball goes up there, that's the that it sticks. And I think if if your striker, especially that solo one, keeps the ball, that gives time for your your wingers, your midfielders to be able to move into those dangerous positions to create that third man run or to pop the ball off and even get a shot off. So the fact that she scored that many goals and plays the way she plays is for me is phenomenal because she works so hard as well. Yeah, I should say 15 goals in 15 games in, in the WSL. It's 26 in all competitions <laughs> yeah. for, for, for the uh, Jamaican this season, who's now working with Sean Gota as well. So the, the, it's <laughs> probably only going to get so even better. Got yeah. Yeah. Say, yeah. <laughs> when he starts going off her shoulder, off a bum, that's when we know Sean's having the difference. Is it, is it a club record, I think, as well, isn't it? Yeah. Which is yeah. just like, that's, look, we've seen records broken every aspect of the club. It's wonderful stuff. And, just an instinctive striker, you know, um, as Sean said, like the mobility and the physicality of a game is so impressive. But just it, people like Bunny, they make goal scoring look easy, but he doesn't. You know, it's really hard, I presume, to score that many goals so regularly. And uh, and it feels like it, it comes so naturally there right now. And I think obviously the setup around it, you can't do it without Laura Coombs and, you know, Chloe um, and Ke um, Lauren Hemp and so on. But Bunny is right now the superstar of this Manchester City side. and. It's really exciting to see how she's built on last season as well. Where she had a good season, but this is just electric. Mm. You know, this is on, on another level, and um, and she right now is the best striker in the league as well. And that's 
you know, given the fact that Sam Kerr plays in this league as well, it's just so, so impressive. Interesting point, that second season at the club. Is that, was it, I say, first season was fine, it was good. Yeah. This season's even better. Was that just getting used to the WSL and now she knows what she's dealing with week in, week out? Um, yeah, but I wouldn't put it down to just getting used to the WSL. I think coming in into a City side, I think you have to get used to the way City play. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's a very unique footballing side, the way they keep the ball, the way they rotate positions, the way certain players do certain things. They, they all have certain roles to play within that team, as well as knowing how to play in everybody else's position, which makes the movement and the interchanging of positions so much easier for them. And that's why people like him can play on the right and it doesn't look any different. It's because they're just so used to, to floating around. And she's settled in now. And it's just scary to think if this is her second season, what's her third season going to be like? <laughs> so these are fantastic things to look forward to as a fan. And for her as a player, it's, it's nice for her to see where her head will be, I can kick on more now. This is just a start for me. And she's just going to grow and grow and she's going to learn the game a lot more. And with goats as well, the man that never scores outside the box, that's the <laughs> best person to take advice from as a striker because he did all of these fantastic work within that 18-yard box. And that's where you want your, your, your number nine to be. And this today's... Perhaps how good we, or how we see how good she really is when she's up against such a good Chelsea defence. I know they haven't got Millie Bright, but they'll yeah. still be a, a well-drilled defence. Still got, you know, Buchanan is one of the best <laughs> yeah. centre backs in the game. You know, in women's football, and she's a multiple Champions League winner, and then got Carter as well. Like it's a really solid Chelsea back line. And um, but once again, these are the tests that you do want. You know, um, I, I don't think for one second Bunny Shaw is particularly nervous about this game. I mean, when you've scored that many goals, you'll feel like you can take on anyone at any point, and uh, Chelsea will just be another obstacle that she'll look to score again against because that's what she does. So it's it's obviously a tougher game than than most in the league this season, but. Once again, I think she's just such a fearless player that that's that's what makes her so brilliant. Uh, Steph Horton was on Match Day Live a couple of weeks ago. Here's what she had to say about Bunny Shaw. The numbers and, are, are frightening, and when you actually watch Bunny play, she's even better. Just tell us how what you've made of her season and, and how important she's been for the team. So yeah, she's been by far our best player this season. I think. Um, Obviously, she was new to us last year and I think it took a while to kind of understand what the manager wanted from her. But I think this season, in terms of not just her ability on the pitch, our football ability, but our physicality has been frightening. I think I spoke about a little bit before in terms of training against her every day. It's really hard and I think, for me, she's been outstanding. I think she leads the line really well. She can dribble, she can shoot from distance, she gets the goals that we, we need and... I mean, she's always a threat and I think them numbers kind of speak for herself. I think we just expect her to score now, which is a great feeling for us and probably rely on her a little bit much, but she's really thriving in that role at the moment and uh, long may continue to the end of the season. In leagues like this, you have to get three points somehow and we certainly did that, but there's nothing better than a last-minute uh, winner and for Bunny to get it, it doesn't surprise us, but, um, yeah, I mean... She's just got that ability to just be a, have a back to goal and be able to turn, and she deserves all the plaudits that she gets at the moment. Absolutely. Well, we can see on this graphic here, uh, most goals uh, from a women's player in a single season took over from Nikita Paris. Mm -hmm. Sean, as well, I know you know Bunny a little bit. I'm hearing there's been a few conversations. You've been giving the odd pearl of wisdom, but you're, you're a big fan, aren't I, you? I am a big fan. <laughs> I have, I've, just, I've just had a couple of chats, but listen, I think a lot of the credit has to go down to the coach and to her because, and our teammates, because uh, she's been absolutely phenomenal. And I, I just, you know, every time I'm watching games, I'm just thinking, go on, can you nick one? Uh, and she, she's scoring important goals. Uh, she's in the right place. That goal that she just scored, <clears throat> she, if she goes anywhere else, she doesn't score, but she turns in the area where the space to get the shot off. Um, and I, I loved it because it's probably not the cleanest shot, but they, but they go in and, and she, you know, she, she's going on and scored there. So I'm really pleased for her and uh, for the girls. It's just that it's like really exciting because, you know, how the women's team's doing, how the men's team's doing in terms of between now and the end of the season, it's just, just really exciting. I mean, I was talking before of her, just saying it's so exciting to look at between now and the end of the season. And, and everything is, well, a lot of us still in our, in our own hands.
There you go, that's Steph Horton and Sean Gota giving their opinions on, on Bunny Shaw. We've been asking you to send your thoughts and questions to Stephen McInerney and Sean Wright Phillips on WhatsApp today. You'll see the number a little bit uh, later. Um, Amy says, question for Stephen, do you think that Bunny Shaw and Erling Haaland have similar attributes and who do you think will end up with the better goal-scoring record this season? <laughs> for ratio, it's very close, isn't it? I think Erling plays more games just by lieu of the fixtures, but I love that we've got them both, by the way. It's just ridiculous. Like, City... It's, it's just weird watching, obviously, the men's team for so long. We had a false nine and we, we didn't have the, that, that guy getting all the goals. And now, now we've got, you know, Erling and Bunny just banging them in. It's it's wonderful. I think I think Erling's going to have more goals, but for ratio, I don't know. It's a goal per game. Bunny's going to challenge him and that's, that's class. I absolutely love it. I mean, that's what you want to see, isn't it? Goals are the most fundamental part of football so you got a striker like that at both teams it's just we're eating good yeah. it's really good <laughs> it's lovely there's no other team like it is there where the men's and the women's team have got such phenomenal strikers Sean at the minute it's, it's great to watch it's, it's fantastic to watch and like I said earlier in the show it's, it's fantastic to see where they're actually going to go because they're both very very early in their city career <laughs> so they're both still young and both still learning. So Breaking their own it's, records. Yeah, yeah. so it's, it's, it's a fantastic journey to actually be able to witness and be a part of. So I'm, I'm looking forward to this channel. A uh, couple more questions. JT says, I've got a question for you, Sean. Uh, what's it like to be in a title race at this point in the season, knowing that you are so close to getting your hands on the trophy? It's, it's a lot of pressure. I think you heard Esme say in a little interview, I think it's, it's pressure from the respective, as you know, right now is the business end of the season. You, you can make mistakes, but you can't afford to make those mistakes that lose you the games, because then realistically it's an uphill battle. And I think all, all the girls, and I know Gareth, they will all know that. So whatever happens today, that they will not want to lose this game. A, a draw with the team leading the league, is a good result because you can kind of kick on from there and I think, I'm not 100% sure, they might still have to play somebody in the top four so then you can close that gap again then. So that, that's what the girls will, they will go out with a, a lot of confidence today knowing that they have a chance, they've got some key players missing and you just focus and it, it, you kind of get in a frame where it's tunnel vision where you just want to keep just bouncing after game after game and hopefully the adrenaline will take them through that to start. Keep your uh, WhatsApps coming in. We'll love to put your questions to the guys. But let's go inside the City uh, Academy Stadium right now. Speak to your match commentator, Ali Mann. Yeah, Ali, good afternoon. What is it like? We, we know a bumper crowd's in there today. So what is it like uh, inside the, uh, the CFA right now? Do you know what? I, I love the atmosphere inside the grounds um, on, on women's games. There's a larger percentage of, of kids than there are at the men's games. And you always get that feel of extra excitement, extra buzz, extra sort of, you know, it's like a novelty as well as, as, as being involved. And you've got that little contrast between those who are desperate for City to win it today and those who are just here to enjoy it. We've had a battle of the bands. We've had uh, every ticket's been taken, every available ticket's been taken. So it's everything you want that makes this feel like it's an occasion, like it's a final, which in many ways, of course, it is for City. Um, I, I did an interview pre-match with Gareth Taylor and, and I asked him how important this game was, expecting him to say, you know, they're all important. To be fair, he said they have to win today and that just adds to the expectation the anticipation and you get the feel that this is a huge game for the club let's be honest yeah a huge game for both sides really it's, it's one where I think we're going to enjoy watching it because both sides can't afford to lose both sides have to win really yeah, it's a fascinating title race. I mean, we're talking about City v Arsenal for the men's uh, Premier League title, a two-horse race, uh, with all due respect to everybody else in the top four. This is a four-horse race. I mean, three points between the top four. It might come down to goal difference. You've no idea how this is going to end up. Uh, but today is City's chance to take three points off Chelsea. For Chelsea, not that they want to draw, but it would suit them a lot better than it would the Blues because Chelsea have got that extra game in hand. But you know what? This is a huge game for City. They have to win it. I feel that they have everything in place to win it. Remember, Chelsea are in the middle of a two-legged uh, Champions League quarter-final against the defending champions, Leon. So they've got a real massive game in a few days' time and City have been able to concentrate on it. OK, they got beaten in the FA Cup quarter-final last weekend, but still, to have a full seven-day preparation to focus on a game that's significant, and, and Gareth said it himself, it's something that he would like to be in these kind of games where they know that a win for them is certainly more significant than a win for Chelsea in terms of City 
have to win it. Chelsea can afford not to. Let's have a look at some of the key battles on the, on the pitch today. Steph Horton versus Sam Kerr, Bunny Shaw versus uh, Magdalena Eriksson. They're, they're probably two of the standout ones anyway. Well, they are, and of course it shows the depth of the City squad that Steph Horton isn't necessarily guaranteed a starting place these days, but she's brought in today. That's a significant factor. You want your big game players playing on a day when they can concentrate on what they do best and not get swallowed up in the occasion. So back comes Steph Horton. Uh, and of course, Laura Coombs comes back as well uh, to sort of take the place of uh, uh, Diana Castellanos. A bit, bit of a kind of a, uh, an energy, a midfield energy in there. But yeah, that's a key battle with Steph Steph Horton against Sam Kerr, who is, if you like, the Bunny Shaw of Chelsea. She has been for some time. And who can stop Bunny Shaw? I mean, she's in this incredible run of, run of form, almost a, a goal a game throughout the season, certainly a goal a game in the last 15 matches. Um, two key areas, two key battles. But I think, uh, although that, of course, is a key area, I think it's who can stop Laura Hem, uh, Lauren Hemp, rather, because Lauren Hemp is such a significant player for City. Bunny Shaw will feed off the ammunition that will come down that left side. Of course, Chloe Kelly will try and do her bit down her side. But for me, Lauren Hemp is the person who I think is likeliest to be coming attacking Ericsson and trying to maybe force her back on her heels to provide the ammunition in the centre for Bunny Shaw. So key battles throughout the pitch. But yeah, definitely can the other defenders stop the other strikers who are in form? I'm going to give you the same question we gave Stephen a minute ago. Bunny Shaw or Erling Haaland, you watch both. Both have similar attributes. Who's going to get the better goal scoring record this season? <laughs> <laughs> it's a funny one, isn't it? Because they'll play fewer games, of course, in the women's game. Bunny Shaw will play a lot less matches, so the actual number will be probably... Low. Well, it will be. It'll be lower, uh, provided Haaland stays fit throughout the rest of the campaign. But if you look at the goal per game ratio, <laughs> it's likely it might go the way of Bunny Shaw because the, the number of goals she's got per the games and the minute she's out on the pitch probably puts her slightly ahead. So it's a funny one. How do you compare them? The answer is you can't because they're both incredible goal getters and I think the beautiful thing about uh, Bunny Shaw is that she's worked in the last few weeks with Sean Gota who's now officially an assistant coach to Gareth Taylor who's worked on a few little things a few little tweaks and the goal scoring continues but that little bit of movement down the sides has been improved and enhanced because he started to introduce little things Sean Gota into a game uh, I mean he was a prolific scorer with incredible goals per game ratio himself so she's now got that little extra edge Bunny Shaw, I'm sure Erling Haaland's been having that kind of one-on-one -on -one, um, attacking coach for a long, long time so it's a difficult one to answer in terms of the number because you'd say Haaland's bound to get the bigger number but it might just be Bunny Shaw gets the better goal per game ratio. You mentioned Chelsea playing in, in the week with this double header against Lyon, do you think fatigue will be a factor today in, in City's favour? Could be could be. I mean, let's not underestimate it. Uh, this is a big opportunity for Chelsea to win the Women's Champions League. It's, it's the holy grail in the women's game, just as it is for the men. And they've got the better of Leon on the first leg. So this is a huge opportunity for them to go further, to go deep, maybe even win it. So it is a distraction. I know Emma Hayes will say it shouldn't be, that these are professionals, that they can concentrate, that they can keep getting up to that level and up to that level week in, week out. But it has to play a psychological advantage. And also, let's be honest about it, because they lost the FA Cup quarter-final last weekend, City's women know that this is their last chance of silverware. Yes, they want to qualify for the Women's Champions League by getting that uh, top three finish, but it, realistically, this has to be their focus. So I think it probably does give City just that slight little edge. And on games like this, with two heavyweights like this, might that just be the decisive factor? Last one, Ali. It's just got that big game feel about it, hasn't it? Oh, it really has. I, I, I mentioned it a few minutes ago. Um, I don't often hear managers say this is a must-win game, but Gareth said it. And it doesn't mean to say that I don't have to dress it up as a commentator. I don't have to hype it up. When the Gareth Taylor, when Gareth Taylor, the head coach, says we have to win this game today, that tells you something. It's a huge game. I've just got a feeling, a gut feeling, that this might just be City's day today. Whether or not that means they ultimately win the league, there's too many uh, little 
twists and turns to happen. There's quite a few significant games. They play Arsenal, of course, uh, in their next WSL game. But I've just got a feeling they might just have that edge today with Chelsea's minds just slightly, ever so slightly, on that Lyon second leg in the quarterfinal. Ali, enjoy the game. I will. <laughs> I think he will. Uh, Ali Mann there, he'll be providing your commentary on City against Chelsea uh, this afternoon uh, in the WSL big one in the title race. City, as Gareth Taylor said, feeling it might be a little bit more of a must win today. Let's go back to your, your WhatsApp questions uh, and get the thoughts of you guys uh, watching Match Day Live at, at home. Uh, Stephen, one for you from Marshall, who says, how good has it been? over the last five or six years to see City's women's team build so much success and really build their stature among the best in women's teams in Europe. Yeah, it's it's wonderful. It's wonderful for the uh, the city of Manchester as well in general. Like, um, one of my best friends is an Evans fan, and he can't wait to bring his daughter to the women's games here at, at, at the, the the CFA because you know it's just such an important thing for so many young women growing up. And um, yeah, they've done an incredible job, you know, uh, developing the side and uh, putting the quality so high so quickly. You know, it takes a long time to get that legacy, but City. You know, have already got such a fierce reputation within the game. So yeah, it's been remarkably, remarkably well done. More about the title race for for you, Sean. You're, you're the man with the experience uh, <laughs> here. Um, Michelle says, how difficult is it to go on a run at the business end of the season when the pressure's on? It's hard. I think what City have done is, like we know from the Chelsea game, they've been on an unbeaten run. So for me, it's for them. It's more of the same. So once you get in that that groove and in that rhythm, it normally just kind of keeps happening until there's that one setback within the league. Um, but for me, you just, it's, it's that single mind thought that they've got. They, they don't know how to lose in the WSL at the minute. That's what they've shown. And it's just a matter of that mentality. Some people say it's naive, but sometimes I learn in football, Naive sometimes is, is kind of the best way to yeah. be when you're on that winning streak because you don't fear anyone. Mm -hmm. You just worry about you and it doesn't matter who you play against, you're still going to do you. And I think that's what they've shown so far in the league and they just need to keep that, keep that mentality going. Um, Jess says how important are leaders for games like this? We spoke about Steph Horton a little bit earlier. How important are leaders for games like this? And uh, who did you enjoy playing alongside who had that leadership mentality? Do you know what? It is, I think people think it's, it's a weird one, but um, Paul Dickoff, he, he had that weird mindset that it might seem silly, but it didn't matter who he was playing against or what game it was, he was going to kick somebody. <laughs> <laughs> no, that but sounds about right. But yeah. do, you, but do, you, do you get what I mean? His mindset was that, well, I'm going to make your life miserable as possible, which kind of sets the tone for everybody else, for people like me behind him, because he would go diving in. And I'm like, well, you're not that much taller than me, so I might as well follow suit. So it, that, if you have that aggression in a game with quality players that the ladies have in their team, I don't personally think Chelsea will be able to deal with it. And it's just been, can you maintain that for 90 minutes? And the chances you get, can you take those chances? And that's what it will come down to today. Like Gareth said, it, it, it happened in the FA Cup game. If you do not take your chances, at some point, the other team will get a chance. And so you take that and it puts Chelsea straight on the back foot. It kind of also brings it back. I know we've spoken a lot about it to, to, to Bunny Shaw. And she has that real physical element. She's yeah. not afraid to throw a shoulder in or stick a leg out if she, if she needs to get physical at any point. Well, you even go back to like Erling in the men's team. Like he's very similar as well. Like you have to have. It's. I think you probably find that across a lot of um, elite footballers, like they're a lot more physical than we give them credit for. Like, you know, that physicality is essential. It's usually, you know. Uh, symptomatic of their just determination to win. So Bunny has that. Um, and to be honest, like in the modern game as well, the striker is the, the first line of defence you know, with the pressing. So you've got the person who's starting the, the, the press being so aggressive and so determined. As Sean says, you know, about Paul Dickop, it does filter through to the rest of the team. And obviously Bunny uh, is aware of her role in that and it's absolutely crucial. Kickoff is a little over 10 minutes away. Let's get a reminder of your team news for Manchester City against Chelsea this afternoon in the WSL. Manchester City make two changes from the uh, defeat to Aston Villa in the FA Cup quarter-final last week. So you can see that Ellie Roebuck uh, starts in goal. The defence of Morgan, Halton, Greenwood and Alexandri. There's uh, 
Chloe Kelly. She's up front today for Manchester City alongside uh, Lauren Hemp and the woman we've just been speaking about, Bunny Shaw. The midfield is Hasegawa, uh, Coombs and uh, Angledal. And I just want to touch on the midfield for a, for a second, um, Sean Wright Phillips, because we, we mentioned Hasegawa and her role in holding the midfield, but Angledal also has that ability. Yeah, they, she definitely does. And I think those two complement each other very well because I think Angledal gives that time if she sits, then you'll see Hasegawa, Hasegawa higher up the field, which we've seen a pass in Eclipse where she played that beautiful reverse ball to Bunny, and that only happens if the other sits. So the way they play together complements each other, and it also allows Coombe to have that freedom to roll into certain areas because of the, the type of players she has behind her to get her the ball. If she's in those number 10 spaces, those two can find and break lines with those passes, which when you're that number 10 role or, or a winger, you need midfielders like them two sitting deep to get you the ball. That's what you rely on and it's, it's the perfect combination. For yeah, you can tell that both have played as a 10 and as a 6. They're just both such uh, wonderfully versatile players and there's a real intelligence to the game and once again, work rate. You know, like neither of them uh, are scared of putting their foot in and there's such an elegance and also a brutality to that midfield. I love it, like the, the physicality, but mixed once again with that technical ability is such a wonderfully balanced midfield. Castellanos misses out. She scored against Aston Villa last weekend, so she's on the bench. How will she be feeling because it's such a big game? Or does that then fuel you up, should the manager call on you in the game, that you're ready to go and, and fired up, I guess? I think it, it, it will fuel her up. I think within the squad that Gareth has built, there's a lot of honest competition. I think um, when you have somebody battling for your position behind you with the qualities that they do have, and that's a fantastic header, by the way, um, that it only makes you better as a player because you help each other whether you're not playing or not. You want each other to do well, but you know at the same time that if you're half a yard of what you should be and what people know you to be, then a player at your level will come in after. And that's basically what's happened. So all it will done, it was it will kick her on, but she'll be there as a team supporting her team and she'll be delighted. That, and it also shows the depth in the, in the City team that we can rotate and bring on the same calibre of play that can cause the same problems and, as we saw, get on the back and score goals. We are under 10 minutes away from Manchester City's probably biggest game of the season uh, so far. How are those players feeling now with, with 10 minutes to go as they start to line up in the tunnel, those final thoughts, the final words from, from Gareth Taylor and the, the leaders maybe of Steph Horton? Excitement. I think that they'll be anxious and... Obviously, they're little nerves, but once you cross that white line and, and the whistle goes, you, you, you know you've got a, a job to do. And being wingers and attackers, my job was always, I always felt, entertain the crowd. So I think people like Hemp and Kelly and Coombs and Bunny will be thinking of those things. Get goals, get the crowd on the edge of the seat, because if you get the crowd on your side, it's, it's honestly the, the 12th player on that pitch. And that, that pitch being so close can get on the back of Chelsea and make them force them into little errors and push the team on further. Sell-out crowd. Yeah. Most of them on City's side. I did see a couple of Chelsea fans as, as I drove in today, <laughs> but we know the large sways that are wearing sky blue. That, that can make it... I mean, CFA, Etihad Stadium, whatever it is, it, it can make a huge difference. Yeah, absolutely. As, um, as Sean said, it's such a close pitch as well. Um, it makes a massive difference, you know, and uh, the noise levels, you know, when City attack and, you know, every little pass, every tackle will be cheered, you know, as if it's a goal. And that stuff does make a difference. Of course it does. Like, we... we it feels like it makes a difference even when you sat in the stands, you know. Like, and ultimately, we forget they're, they're football fans as well, you know, and they want to feel that love and they want to feel that like visceral support from, them, and they'll get it today. And um, and I think Gareth will probably be saying that as well, saying, look, you know, people have turned up today, you know, and um, put on a show, you know, turn up and like show them, you know, just how how great this side is and how important this game is. I think it's come to that time where we ask you both for your score <laughs> predictions as well. Ahead of such a big game. Who dare go, go first? first yeah. Who no, wants to stick their neck on the line? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go for it. I'll go for 2-1. Two 2-1 one. Two one Man City. Oh, I should have gone first. That's what I was going to say. Yeah. But I'm going to just level up. I'm going to say 2-1 as well. Both 2-1. Excellent. Mm. First scorer. Is there only one person in this category? You know what? I'm going to actually say Lauren Hemp. Lauren Hemp? Yeah. Bunny. Bunny shot. Yeah, funny, funny <laughs> Someone was going to predict that yeah. at some point. Someone was going to predict Safe that. Bayonet. Uh, it is a big game at the top of the WSL then. Manchester City know they can leapfrog Chelsea 
with a win this afternoon and really give themselves a boost uh, for the WSL title. Manchester City against Chelsea then, here on Match Day Live. Let's join your match commentator inside the CFA, Alistair Mann, good afternoon.